Hello everybody, this is Cap here, and I would like to welcome you to the third video on arrays. So in this video, we are going to be covering passing arrays to functions, dynamic arrays, and multi-dimensional arrays. So let's say we make a function here to print out arrays. So we just say void print say it's for integer arrays and we need another integer for the length and you'll see why later Okay, there we go, simple enough. If you want to pass in an array, you just have the data type, your, you know, temporary name, it doesn't really matter what that is, followed by your braces, or brackets. So let's make an integer array down here. Call it num and let's have a size of well let's actually uh, create a integer for that const int size and we'll set that equal to three it just makes things easier size and then equals there we go so now if we want to call print say print num without the brackets and then pass in the length save it, run it, and it did exactly what we wanted it to. So, we're actually not passing in the array itself. What we're doing is we're passing in a pointer to the array, which is why we don't know the size or anything in the actual method, which is why we pass it in here. So, it's actually makes it you know a bit more efficient though you know occasionally for certain reasons it can cause issues but that's actually what's happening you're passing in a pointer not the actual array itself that's mainly the thing that I wanted to get through to you guys here is that it's a pointer not the actual array So the next thing on our list is dynamic arrays. So dynamic arrays are, you know, like regular arrays that we've been doing, but their size does not have to be known at compile time. It can be decided at runtime. So the way you create a dynamic array is of course you have your data type and we're allocating it on the heap so we need to create a pointer to store the address that's returned so we'll just say num there as well equals new int and we're going to pass in size but since it is a dynamic array it no longer has to be a constant which means we could do something like ask how large should the array be and then 
assign that to size. Let's set that to zero. And then we can come down here and create a for loop. Have it less than size. And then just have it go through our array here and assign it the value of i. And then we'll use our handy print function that we made and have it print out our array so we can see it. So let's run this. It says how large should the array be? And I'm going to say eight. And as you can see, it created our dynamic array with eight elements. And I filled it in with you know, zero through seven. So if you want to use an array, but you don't know what size it's going to have to be for your program, a dynamic array will work you know, great for that kind of situation. But since we do use the new operator, it's also a good idea to delete it. So don't forget about that very important step. Okay, moving right along here, let's get to the final uh, subject here, which is multi-dimensional arrays. Now, multi-dimensional arrays can be a little confusing when you look at them, because when you declare them, you have, you know, let's say, an int, name it multi. three and then three so what we have here is a two-dimensional array and you can assign them just like any other array one two three four five six seven eight and nine but it can be a little bit confusing when you assign them this way because what we the way you actually have to think of it here is you have to think of it like this when you're accessing them anyways you need to think of it like this so we have one we have two we have three four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So in other words, we have zero, 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 one, zero, two, one, zero, one, 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 two, two, zero, two, one, and two, two. As you can see here. So, in other words, if we accessed 1, 1, we would be accessing the number 5. So, if I were to come down here and say, see out multi 1, 1, and just have it print that out, we should get 5 as we did. So thankfully there is a far less confusing way that we can assign these here. Actually create multiple pairs of braces in here for each group. And then of course we have four, five, six, So 
seven, oops, eight, nine. And to make things even easier to read, a lot of people actually align them like that. Which basically gives you the exact same things we have down here. It makes it a lot easier to read and know what you're accessing. So I hope that uh, makes sense to you guys about the multi-dimensional array, how it's, you know, think of it like it, a chart like here. And really, the only time I think I've actually used a multi-dimensional array is when I was making a, like a board game. And other than that, I, I don't think I've actually used one. So, I mean, they can come when, you know, you do need them. They're very useful, but, you know, you probably won't use them that much. So, it's just something to be aware of and kind of, you know, know generally how to use. But it's not something you should probably have to know in depth. You know, something you could, maybe if you come across it, look up for your situation so anyways that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video uh, if you like this video please let me know by hitting the like button if you've seen a few of my videos you can go ahead and subscribe so you can see when I post new ones and I would like to thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video